Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm Chiang from Bloomberg. This work was done during my internship at Google. Uh, I recently graduated from University of Minnesota. Uh, these are my collaborators, Jiling, Miming, Sagar, Alex, Frank Hoys, and Ed. Okay, multi-class classification has been used for recommendation. Uh, it's a pretty effective, powerful technique. It's a simple model. Uh, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to assume that recommendation task is modeled as this multi-class classification. Specifically, we observe a series of interactions from users. This is a user profile. You can see a series of items consumed or watched here, movies. The, our task is to predict the next item this user is going to be interested in. Uh, effectively, this is saying that we're going to classify this user with some context information into one of the item class. Each item corresponds to one class. As you can imagine, that the, po the problem here is that the possible number of classes or items can be huge. Uh, because when we want to train this model, we need to compute the loss for this, which involves expensive softmax normalization uh, across the whole catalog of items. <clears throat> In practice, we do negative sampling. Instead of uh, normalizing across the whole catalog of items, we sample a smaller set of items, and with, um, then do the normalization with some correction to speed up. Uh, our motivation here is can we improve on top of this uh, to utilize the item grouping structure in the items, uh, output space. This echoes a little back to the previous keynote yesterday about the structural prediction. Uh, what do we observe? As you observe here, items, they are not flat vocabulary without any relationship with each other. They are naturally clustered into groups. For example, based on its categorical attributes. Here, this is topic. So in addition to the series of item interaction now, we also observe a series of topic level preference translation from that user. <clears throat> Intuitively, we can imagine predicting the next item that the user is interested in is hard, but predicting the next group of items that the user is interested in can be easier. So can we improve by introducing this additional task? We explored two approaches, multitask learning and hierarchical softmax to utilize this grouping structure. In the multitask learning case, we have two parallel tasks. So we not only predicted the item, but also predicted the associated topic or group of that item. So we have two losses here, so item level softmax loss and topic level softmax loss. Uh, but they are sharing the same user level representation, share, uh, sharing the bottom. So intuition here is that we might be able to improve user embedding representation. In the hierarchical softmax case, this is not parallel anymore, it's a sequential. We first make a prediction on the topic level, we have topic level softmax, then condition on our topic prediction, uh, for example, drama here, then we do another prediction within topic item softmax. So the intuition here is that intuitively, we reduce our one harder task into two simpler tasks. You might be able to see this. This is a Tisney visualization of the softmax embedding. Uh, well, in the left part, this is a baseline, flat softmax. You can see that it's trying to not only learn user, oh, no, sorry, item representation, but also grouping. But in the right part, this is two softmax. It seems that a topic has taken the responsibility of learning the grouping of items, leaving the item softmax embedded to learn the individual item representation. So we conducted a few experiments. Uh, first is public Behance data, uh, data set. These are the statistics of the data set. The attribute here is the owner. Each item is associated with one owner. The right part, this is showing the distribution of the group size. How many items does each owner own? It's highly skewed, unbalanced grouping structure. Another data set, this is a proprietary large scale data set. These are the statistics as you see here. Two attributes are involved, topic and publisher. Uh, similarly, it's showing the same distribution for the group size. Highly unbalanced, highly skewed. Here are the results. 
Uh, we found that multitask learning and hierarchical softmax can improve on top of both matrix factorization and neural network, specifically SVD feature and RM. We also observed that hierarchical softmax has larger gain. Notice that this is a pretty big uh, improvement in term, uh, um, compared with the baseline in terms of accuracy. And consistent with our uh, hypothesis, we indeed observe that predicting item groups, item attribute, is indeed easier than predicting items. This, you can see that uh, attribute prediction map scores are much higher compared with the item level prediction. Similarly, on this large scale data set. Uh, what if the grouping structure is noisy? In the real world data set, so, uh, the item grouping structure can be noisy. Does this benefit still hold? We tested this by introducing noise into the grouping structure. So noise or randomization. If the number is zero, it means we directly just use the categorical attribute induced grouping structure. Uh, if the number is one, it means we use a purely random grouping structure. We found this HSM is robust to noisy grouping structure, but purely random grouping doesn't improve. Uh, it has a slight negative effect on the accuracy, but it doesn't, go to, it doesn't go to zero. As long as the grouping structure is consistent between training and the testing, the model is still learning how to predict the item. Uh, next hypothesis. Does this HSM have more improvement for the long tail or code start items? And the answer is yes. We have some evidence to support this hypothesis. Uh, please go to see the paper to see the details how we test this. And the next, uh, this is the last hypothesis we looked at. Does this advantage of HSM generalize across different type of user models? Uh, we tested this by simulation. We simulated two types of user models. One is single level, and another one is two level. In the single level case, this is a better fit for the flat softmax. So we compute the softmax and then we sample item from that categorical uh, distribution, single level data set. In the two level case, the user, for each user, when we want to sample an item, we first sample a group or, or attribute according to a category the distribution. Then conditional on that, we sample again the item within that group or top. Uh, or attribute. So you, you can see that this two level is a better fit for the hierarchical softmax. This is generating data according to hierarchical softmax. What we found is that hierarchical softmax improves in both cases. Intuitively, it's a better fit for the two level data set, but actually, even for the single level data set, hierarchical softmax can improve on top of the baseline. This is suggesting that hierarchical softmax generally is a more powerful modeling technique. To give a summary, the grouping structure of item categorical attributes can be used to improve multi-class uh, classification model accuracy in recommender system through multitask learning or, and especially, hierarchical softmax. Uh, I believe that the implication of this work goes beyond just improving the accuracy of the classification. Uh, for example, we might wonder, or carefully, we want to examine the hypothesis whether this model actually is a better fit for actual user behavior. Is there such a multi-level decision-making process in actual user uh, behavior? And secondly, we have, uh, in, it's increasingly popular for recommended systems to d display a dynamic lists of recommendations organized according to different themes. And you can imagine this technique can be naturally used for their for that. And because of this uh, categorical attributes, this, this uh, two-level sequential prediction is interpretable to the user. It's using metadata of the item. It's understandable by users. We might be able to utilize this to do interactive preference elicitation in recommended systems. And I want to say thanks to Google for supporting this work with the internship. And I want to thank Bloomberg for supporting my traveling here. With that, I conclude my talk. Thank you. Very interesting talk. We have time for a couple of questions. Hi. 
um, oh, Reza from <coughs> Zalando. I have a tiny question. Um, I think in the multitask uh, problem, uh, it's very important to choose correctly the weights of the loss functions you use, because one task may be simpler than the other one. And my, I'm wondering if, is, if this has played a role in your results that the multitask version is not as good as the hierarchical one. Uh, are you asking that whether we try different weight combination for the different tasks? Yes, and how often did you try it? Uh, we didn't try this one. I think uh, it is definitely some interesting to look, uh, starting to look at, to tune those parameters to, to find the best combination for different tasks. Uh, we already observed an improvement for this multitask learning with equal weights. At this moment, it's equal weights for the multitask. Okay, thanks. Right. Thanks. Uh, hi, this is you. Uh, I just got a quick question. Sure. Uh, so, just for information, the the model you presented here, the hierarchy of the max, actually got another name, if I understand it correctly, in the field of uh, econometrics. It's called the nested logic model. Very similar. So, uh, the question actually is coming from this. So, have you ever considered the case that um, uh, a title can belong to several um, mm -hmm. journals simultaneously. Have you ever put the um, correlation structure into this uh, hierarchy of the max? Right. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, it, we, uh, it's, so in this case, uh, you might observe that we assume each item has only one parent okay. group. Uh, it's Interesting to look at the multiple parent relationship, and I think it's necessary to look in the real world data side. You usually have this uh, uh, not one by one kind of a single parent relationship, and it's interesting future work. Uh, okay. We have tried, uh, but uh, it's not obvious yet. To, for example, it is no, not only for single attribute multiple, va um, multiple values, but also multiple dimensions for example. So how to model this case, I think it's an interesting future to look at, but okay, we don't you. have an answer to that yet. Yeah, Thanks. I guess you can have a try. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Uh, hi, Omar from Microsoft. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, because I think in the past I came across something, uh, a problem that's similar, but the data is unstructured or it has less metadata like uh, clear defined categories like in this case. Uh, do you think uh, using something like uh, maybe k-means or things like that to create clusters uh, instead of these metadata categories would work uh, for this method as well as the, these cluster would be the categories? Oh, yes, that's a good question. Yes, I think uh, clustering definitely, uh, I think it's a uh, possibility to, uh, to construct your own grouping structure, not necessarily utilizing the categorical attributes. Uh, although I favor this type of uh, structure because it's interpretable, it's also actually more readily available compared with uh, uh, algorithmically generated clustering or clusters. Uh, I think, although I think the benefit might still hold as well. Okay, thanks. thanks. Okay, let's thank the speaker. Thank you.